Well, hello and welcome to the show. Glad you've joined us this week. We're talking about safety in the herd. We're gonna talk about how herd dynamics and the pecking order affect you, and then how to stay safe in this environment. That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source and you dream about the moment when you leave it all behind and climb up on that one true horse. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance Take a ride on one true horse Gonna take a ride on one true horse You know, one of my favorite things to do as a horseman is to come out here and look through the babies and see what the foals are gonna look like in a couple of years that I'm starting. But more importantly, what I do while I'm out here is I observe the pecking order. And the pecking order is really, really misunderstood in my opinion. A lot of people think that the pecking order has to do with who gets the best feed, because that's frequently where we see it. But the truth is the pecking order has a lot more to do with who's in charge of my safety. In other words, if I can't beat that horse up, then obviously he's enough tougher than I am that he's capable of protecting me. So a lot of times you can watch and in a herd this big, you'll see the pecking order sort of vary and shift and move uh, a little bit, but you'll typically find a dominant horse. And there's one appy mare out here that's my wife's mare, and uh, that mare is gonna be dominant all the time. She may not be the only dominant mare, but she'll never ever stop being dominant. If she tells something to move, they're gonna move and get out of her way. And so, it's important to kind of see that. One of the things that I think is probably highly misunderstood is that uh, we've pulled the studs for the year, but in the case that a stud would be in this uh, mare band, he would absolutely be the final say in the, in the final law and everything. This mare coming to me, you've seen her on television quite a bit. This is Dosie Blue. And Dosie, this is her first year out in the brood mare band. And she's had a really tough year. From the viewpoint, she doesn't really think she ought to be at the bottom of the pecking order. Dosie thinks that she probably is the top of the pecking order, but nobody else out here agrees with her and she hasn't got enough force to get her point across. So she's had a really tough year as she's continued to struggle and try and be the top of the line. And maybe four or five years from now she will be, but right now that's just not her lot in life and that's not her position. So I like to watch that stuff because it's really important to me as a horseman that I understand that if Horse number 10 on the pecking order is the strongest and the one most capable of taking care of this whole herd, then I have to be at all times horse number 11. I have to be the one who's a little bit stronger. There's some mares out here. Rio, this red or this sorrel mare over here, is a little more passive, and you'll never see Rio pin her ears at anybody. She's just kind of real passive, a real nice mare, and she just sort of floats in the middle. If you notice at this point, as I walk around here, whoever I put my hands on, their ears come forward and they greet you. They don't see me as somebody they can push around. This is a great place to be, and it's a great place to get hurt. And it doesn't matter if your herd is two geldings, or two mares, or a mare and a gelding, or five horses, two ponies, and, and a mule, and three horses. It really doesn't matter. Whatever the herd is, the herd has to accept you at all times, and you have to establish that authority among them. Hello, sweetie. How are you? This is where we start building those relationships right here. None of these babies are halter broke. None of them have been imprinted. They're all born out here on the range. Uh, we've got two or three different mare pastures. This pasture is a section at 640 acres. And so they're born out here and they see us. We come out here two or three times a week and we bring grain and we see them all. But uh, this is where we start developing those interactions. Hello there. 
Hey, good girl. But I want them all to see me with that same level of respect. Right here, that mare comes by me because somebody else told her, get out of my way. What's important to me is that she went by me, not over me. She got here, she saw me, and she veered off knowing she better get out of my way. That's exactly my point. It's really easy to get in here, hello sweetie, and get hurt because they all start tussling for a spot. And if that spot happens to be you, then you're gonna end up in trouble. All right, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get a bucket of grain out and I'm gonna show you how in that situation, I'm going to enforce my position in the herd because right now it's pretty simple. There's nothing for them to fight over or be around, so there's really not a big deal around me. Once I bring out a little more stimulation, things could change drastically. One of the things I absolutely won't do is carry a feed bucket into a group of horses without a little buggy whip. I need to be able to even the playing field. I need these horses to understand I've got feed, they know it, but if I need to move them out of my space, then they know if I can touch them, they're too close. And I'm gonna carry that with me and tell them, hey, go on, Rio. Oh, that's Emmy. Get out of my space and leave me alone. And so I'll shake this bucket and they know I've got this grain. And sugar here doesn't take anything from anybody. These babies, move them back out of my space. Keep them back away from me. And you don't have to be panicked about it or hyper, just kind of be, go on, Emmy. Be pretty calm and relaxed. And when I go to this feed bunk to drop this feed, I want them to know I don't have to rush. I don't have to hurry. I can come out here just as calm and relaxed. And right there, when Sugar kind of pins her ears at me, I'll go ahead and get after her a little bit. Now, when I'm out of there, all of a sudden, the arguments are going to start and you're going to see who's in what position. Come here, Chex. Come here, Sugar. Chex and Sugar are two mares that have argued back and forth for a year over their position, but they've decided to kind of pair up. Hello, Annie. Now, right there, if I get pushed a little bit, I'm going to turn around and push back and say, hey, get out of my way. Lola and Madison here, these two bay mares, are both new this year. There's a couple of reset mares here that are new, and you'll watch. They'll kind of stay away from everybody. They'll just sort of stay on the outside edges. They haven't decided yet where they fit in this pecking order. And so, right there, I'm gonna push on checks. She pushed on me a little bit, and it's important. I don't wanna be mean. I really don't. Hello, big girl, how are you? But it's important that she understands she can't push on me. They need to get back out of my space for my safety. Why am I more important than the horse? Because if they hurt me, I'm not here to feed them tomorrow, okay? So, it sounds a terrible thing to say, gee, you're more important than the horse. Hello, Madison. But in the long run, you are. Hey, Sass, how are you? Good girl. Sassy pins her ears at me, I'm gonna push her on. Say, get out of my space. Nobody's ever allowed to even pin their ears at me. Well, isn't that kind of being legalistic? Yes, it is. It's being real legalistic because it's my safety. And I keep saying that, but it's really, really important. Then once I've had a chance to kind of dump feed to them all, and honestly, you don't need to come out here and whack and beat on horses. You see me shake this little buggy whip in their face a few times, or in their shoulder, and they get out of my way. They understand, partly because all the groundwork we do with our horses, all of the work we do in breaking them to ride, all of that comes into play in, in building a level of respect for your horses. So as I come out here, that respect is already there. All of that work I've done is already there. So all I've got to do now is make it fit together with being in a herd 
around feed and making sure they understand I'm the most dominant one out here. Now what I do once they're eaten, I start watching and I start trying to pick out who I want to ride. And I have to admit, I'm pretty selfish. I get to pick my string before anybody else gets to pick theirs. And so I stand down here and I have to admit, I do cherry pick the ones I like the best. And I watch, if you watch this feed bunk over here, you've got six yearling fillies and a broodmare with a baby coming over there. And so I'll watch, now as Sugar moves in, she's gonna push all those babies. And what I see, this sorrel filly coming to me is one of my favorite fillies, but she was the absolute first one to leave. She left there right away. The roan filly still at the feed bunk is probably my ultimate favorite filly out here. She's a touch common headed, but she's got a really super nice body. She's really physical. And when that mare came up and pinned her ears, the roan filly just kind of stayed there. She didn't panic and leave. She didn't fight. And she waited and when the feed was gone, she walked off. And so probably of the fillies right here, you've got these six fillies right here. That roan closest to the camera is probably one of my favorites. This Palomino right here is a really neat little filly, but this pair right here, this Dun mare with the bald face, that's Czech. She is one of my favorite mares, and I really like her filly, but if you watch, her filly's a bit more standoffish. And so as I look at her, I have to know there's gonna be a little more work to overcome there. Now her personality could change a little bit, but it's not likely going to. If you look right there at the two, at the two horses you've got there, the, the two babies, the little bay colt has got his head down in that bucket and he's willing to sort of be real adventurous. That filly is willing to nuzzle around the top, but she wasn't willing to stick her head in there until after he showed her it was okay. So you know when we get to breaking those two colts, when they're two-year-olds, that colt is gonna be a little more courageous, a little more inquisitive, a little easier to get through the tough stuff. That filly's gonna be a little hang back, a little bit tougher, and that's the way her mom was. And I really like her mom, but she was a little harder to get broke, took a little more effort. Now as the appies come up here, and again, this is my wife's appy mare and, and her baby, and um, then I can take the time to start watching confirmation as I walk through my bunch, just like this bay colt. I've already started kind of picking him out and saying, gee, I kind of like him. I'll watch him now for the next year or two. This mare, we started her two-year-old this year and I really liked him. And this baby is probably even better physically than the, than the one we started this year. But they're always gonna be a bit standoffish and just a, a bit out of the picture and, and a little away from you. So again, if I'm gonna pick one for me, I'm gonna to wanna to pick the one that I think is gonna learn the fastest, that's going to be the easiest to deal with, and gonna, gonna have the most desire to, to please and want to be a little bit better quality horse and not take quite as much work. So you look and like, here's one that we've sort of totally ignored. And sometimes those are the ones you really wanna watch. There's this Palomino mare out here and she's got a buckskin baby walking beside her. And he's the one that sometimes you just sort of skim over because they don't draw your attention. And a lot of times that's the horse that you really are looking for. He's not a coward and he's not aggressive. He's just back here kind of hanging out, hoping for the best. And, and so a lot of times, hello girls. Hey fella, how are you? And like, as I walk up to him, he sticks his nose out. He thinks about being inquisitive. Checks, you're a good girl. When this mare bumps into him, he respectfully moves out of her way but he didn't bolt and run off. So like I said, those are things that I look for. What am I not seeing? What horse isn't drawing my attention? Because a lot of times that's the horse you want. Now I want a horse with presence, right? I want a horse that steps into the arena or, or out on the trail and says, hey, I'm right here, I'm ready to go. But at the same time, I want him to do it with some class and some tact. And this little guy really does a nice job. He's just as cute as they come. Hey, look at that. Hey girl. Here's that little Dunn filly gonna be willing to be friendly. Good girl. Yeah, there we go. Those are the things I come in here and look for. I really encourage you to take all the time you can to be among your horses. If you don't have babies, you're not fortunate enough to have a pasture full of babies. I understand that, not everybody can do that. We don't breed babies to sell babies. We breed babies for riding horses and we have an end purpose for every horse in here. And if you don't have that, 
then I would recommend you don't breed because you, you need to have an in purpose for what you're doing. Uh, especially in the world, in the horse industry today. So if you don't have this opportunity, I understand that, but you have, if you only have one horse to watch, you can still watch the way that horse interacts with your dog or interacts with your cat, or you can at least start saying, all right, what do these things mean? What, is it, what does it mean when that horse pins his ears? And you watch, as we watch this footage, you've seen several times where a Merrill pin her ears and look at a horse and give it a dirty look. And if she looks and pins its ears and nothing happens, then what does she do? And, and Emmy, the old sorrel mare, is really uh, bad about it. She'll pin her ears and look, and then she's just going to lunge over there and bite on them until they get figured out, get out of my way. So you start watching the way they interact among your dog, your cat. Even your cat will get a reaction from them, or yourself for sure. Hey, girl. And I love to come out here and do this kind of stuff. We've got an Anhalter broke filly. I want to know how much of me will she accept. Right there was a perfect example. This old mare just walks through life crabby. As I come into this field full of fillies, what I want to look at is if I was going to pick one out of this bunch of eight, and they're very, very similar to the ones, the yearlings we saw up on the hill. This is a little bit the younger crowd by a month or two. Uh, but otherwise, they're very similar. How would I pick one and what would it look like? Which one would it be? First thing that you're always gonna be drawn to is the last thing that's important and that's eye appearance. You know, which one really appeals to my eye? And so I'm gonna set this bucket down here where I can kind of watch them around that bucket. And so as they come up here, this Palomino in the front really appeals to my eye really uh, quickly. She's, she's flashy in color. She's a pretty little girl. I like her. So I'm gonna kind of look at her and say, all right, how does anybody else compare to her? If she was a sorrel, would I still like her the best? If she was a bay, would I still like her the best? Hello there, little girl. This is another one I like really well. She's pretty nice. But again, if she was a sorrel. So let's look at the sorrel filly right next to him, right here. She's a touch long, eye to muzzle. Maybe that would, I'd say, well, she's a bit common headed. She's got a super nice hip on her. She's got a good deep heart girth to her. She's got a nice neck. It ties into the withers well. So I like her. So now let's go over and compare her to the Palomino, who I said, well, what would she look like if she was a sorrel? So I come over here. One of the things like this filly's given me a great shot at her gaskin. She's got a heavy gaskin. Her hip ties in down low and, and nice. I like that. I get a chance to look at her head. She's shorter eye to muzzle than the sorrel is. She's not as deep in the heart girth. I like a horse with a deep heart girth. It's where I'm gonna get a lot of power from. Uh, now this filly over here was the first one I actually looked at, but she's straight legged, she's clean. She's got a clean throat latch. She's got a pretty nice neck. Her neck ties in a touch high. So I'd fault her there and, and in her depth of withers, a depth of heart girth, where the sorrel, I really only faulted her in her head. Maybe she's not as heavy in the hip. When I get back to the first filly I looked at, the first Palomino filly I looked at, I'm going to say, all right, where is she at? Well, she's weaker in the stifle and the gaskin area. She's smaller in the hindquarters than the other Palomino filly. She's not as deep as this sorrel. She's a little bit longer in the back than this sorrel. So overall, I'm probably going to say that really she doesn't qualify even though she's the flashiest in color, she's got a nice throat latch. She's, uh, her neck line is not as strong as it could be. Her top line on her neck's not as strong as it could be. And then all of a sudden, I'm gonna come in here and look at this bay. And say, well, wait a minute. How did these bays compare? This filly is heavy in her hip. She's got a really nice hip to her. She's really good and deep in the heart girth. She's got a real set of withers to her. She's short in the back. I like to see a horse whose muzzle length is not really any deeper than the top of their nostril in a horse. And remember, uh, these are quarter horse babies, so the quarter horse saying uh, really fits, and that is that every quarter horse should have a butt like a washerwoman and a face like a princess. And, and you want to keep that in mind. And, and then that head and neck is really important. When I look at that horse, I want to see balance in their head and neck. And so really, probably still the nicest set of withers and neck out here is on the sorrel filly. 
she's probably the best. So out of what we're looking at here, there's a couple fillies we haven't even mentioned, but this Palomino here, that chunky bay over there, and this Sorrel filly would probably be my three top picks. Pretty is nice to look at, but it's hard to ride. But at the same time, uh, if the only difference between one horse and another when it comes right down to it is looks, then um, ride the pretty one. And remember this, when you take a horse apart, always, always put them back together. Like I was a little hard on this filly for the length of back, but who's the first one to walk up and stick her nose in my pocket? That filly right there. My grandfather lived by an axiom that I have seen to prove quite true. He said, look at a horse when it's four days, four weeks, and four years old, and you're gonna get kind of about what you wanna see. And so how much does confirmation change? Well, truthfully, they're gonna grow and they're gonna change, but your overall structural uh, framework is going to stay the same. The angles are likely to stay the same. The, the horse's overall structure isn't going to change. So you always wanna say, all right, I subtracted this and this and this from this horse. What did you give back to him? What did you give him back? And so you have to come back and say, wow, she's, she's a little long back. Oh well, uh, that's not the end of the world. She's got a super sweet disposition. She's got a nice hip on her. She's got good straight legs. She's got a good deep heart girth. She's got a good set of withers. Gee, I faulted her in one area. Some of these horses I faulted in two or three areas. And you wanna make sure that you always see the forest for the trees. You know, looking at horses and talking about horses is probably my absolute favorite thing to do. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I appreciate you joining me every week. And until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. For more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. Gonna take a ride on one true